There we are, there is my Kvek yeast that I well, got the slurry from this beer. And as you can see, we're just in uh, Kvek la uh, land these days. Here is the hops of choice today. They are said to impart fruity and citrus characters such as tangerine almost to a boil coconut is said for the sabro also cedar mint cream um, these it sounds to me like it's maybe like mosaic where you get a well, I might have something on my lens um, a mixture of different kinds of flavors and aromas but then I'm goofing it all up by using the Sigma Uranus Kvek strain. Now, the fun thing about this today for me is you're said to only need a teaspoon of that slurry. So, I'm going to try it. I'm going to start with a teaspoon. As you can see, I have a lot more than that. I have another jar of it as well. So, if it's not going in maybe like a day, I can, I can uh, you know, add some more. But... It's going to be interesting. I'm doing the same grain bill as the Kvek IPA except for without the little bit of the dehust um, stuff to give it a little bit darker color. So basically it's 10 pounds of Arturo, 3 pounds of Chevalier. Simple. And here we go. I'm in the process of getting the wort from my brew kettle into the fermenter via this sanitized pitcher but what I'm gonna do now is put this yeast in there to make sure that it gets all washed I've never done this before so I'm just gonna go ahead and sorry I'm not I'm trying to well, that is like a a, a big uh, teaspoon so let's see here. Do 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 do. All right. So there she goes, and I'll keep pouring the wort in here. I'll get my strainer back, and I'll keep pouring the wort, and I'll wash the little bits in there and mix it all up. I cooled it down to about ninety. I'm not going to ferment it um, especially warm. I'm just going to actually kind of maybe do it a little bit on the cooler side. And by that I mean 75, 80 to see if I get less yeast character out of this strain that's uh, very unique and, um, you know, uh, almost too unique. I mean, I, uh, I already have five gallons of the stuff on tab I got this really interesting hop that I also want to see what it does so I might ferment it a little bit cooler for a kvik strain and but yeah I'll be really curious to see if just that little bit of yeast gets it going and if so good lord I have you know 50 teaspoons in here and another jar like this too and you could always just collect it off of the next batch so you could see how it'd be really easy to keep it going if it's a strain that you like to use so about to wrap this up I got uh, just five gallons which is good and uh, it's going to be in the mid to upper 1050s which for 13 pounds of grain maybe a little bit lower I mean 1060 is what I got last time um, I will get the reading on that in a bit it'll be about 10 It'll be close. Also, it's 80 degrees, so that means I have to add a couple of points. So here is this thing, my infrared thermometer. So yeah, 81. Interesting. It dropped a little bit more as it was sitting in the water. And so that is, you know, like almost registering on that um, 
thermometer, but I'll keep an eye on it. It'll hopefully be, you know, around that temperature. And yeah, I'll definitely keep you posted on how it starts fermenting. I thought I would check on this this morning before I go to work. It's been about 21 hours or so, and definitely is fermenting. Don't have a lot of uh, activity right here, but it could either be because it just doesn't have the pressure yet, or I did tighten all this down again, but sometimes there's a little leak of air. But we'll check on it this afternoon. The temperature, you won't be able to probably see, it's uh, 70. Four, seventy-two, or even seventy-ish. So, um, kind of cool, but uh, it's definitely doing something. Uh, here we are. About, I don't know. It's the next day after I dumped the uh, teaspoon in, and uh, the other clip I just did was this morning. And now when I come home, I see it's. You know, it's got this big old croisin. I thought I'd be safe in this bubbler, and I think I will be. It's probably up to about here right now. Um, and there's still kind of quite a bit of headspace in there. But it is about 72, 74. I actually put some, put this foam on the floor, and I put a couple of shirts over it, so it'll, it's come up a few degrees. And I think that'll be interesting for what I'm trying to do. I'm just interested to see if I can dial back the character a little bit of this yeast however I did under pitch which may stress the yeast and cause more character but we'll see doing yeah, his camera boy. shit in the background <laughs> okay so is that now, yeah okay here we are here with we the are. Sabro Kvike which you saw the outside one. The inside one, I don't know what order you'll actually see the videos of what I posted in, but that's the one that I am calling Kvike IPA, which these are the same grain bills, except in almost the same gravities, 1059, 1060, down to 1011, 1010. So almost the same in that regard. But the middle ones here have two ounces of a dehust uh, highly kilns malt perla negra just two ounces and that's two ounces a pretty big difference so it was fun to i mean they're brewed sep separate occasions um but it was fun to see the difference we'll be drinking this beer in another video but this pouring is just to have them kind of both on camera so this is mm. the sabro so have you had some sabro beers ever mm, yum this is good i okay. have I've had um, Blackstack had a beer, I can't remember what it was called offhand, but it was all Sabro. That might have been dead. This is all Sabro. And um, yes, we it's doing kind of a similar thing. I would almost say this has a little bit more bitterness, which they may not have done. They're known for kind of like late edition hops only, so that might have been the case. Which one? Blackstack? Yeah. Oh. Some of their beers I don't believe get better. So yeah, I totally get like that. Um, th it's not in the nose as much, but as soon as you drink this, I get that kind of like, I do get coconut, whereas some beers I don't. Some I get more like pineapple, mango, citrus. Some Sabro this, beers. Sabro beers, specifically. I'm getting, I am getting that like oh, soft nice. vanilla, kind of coconutty, and not even like toasted coconut, just like sweetened coconut flaked. Just lightly drunk, not yeah. fully Yeah, if this toasted. is Sabro hops, it might this be interesting. Oh. I was gonna say that would be interesting this is if it tastes like toasted, like coconut Ariana and Callista. That's a whole another thing. Okay, but yeah, no, this is well, that's this reminds me of. That. I get the more of the tangerine, mm -hmm. mango, orangey that, stuff. The but Tropicana orange juice. This hop, and if you've been paying attention, no, you haven't. It doesn't matter. You shouldn't pay attention. But I made a mosaic. I made a few mosaic beers, uh -huh. and. I find that hop to be really interesting because of the wide variety of flavors and aromas you get from one hop. Yeah. And so in that case you get some of these citrusy fruity things and you also get like pine. This one, I think you get things like the fruity things I just listed off, you're listing off coconut, 
vanilla, but I think you also get like this mint or cedar or mm. which is kind of like piney. Nice. I think you get these other more in the flavors maybe than the aroma, as well as all of those big juicy fruit yummy goodness. Like this beer I think drinks like it's kind of like a fruity thing. But here is the kicker. I used the Sigmund Uranus Kvike yeast, which slurry in a previous video that we just revisited tonight. That beer is a little bit weird tasting. It's a little yeah. different. It's pretty tart, kind of orangey. This beer, I feel like, is probably, and I'll, while I can't know this for sure, the showcasing the hops. Mm -hmm. I don't think the yeast is playing a huge role in this beer. I mean, would you tend to agree with that? I think the yeast might be also some of those tangerine and orangey things. Okay, you're sure. getting as much as, as the hops. That but, could be a part are, of it. You already told the story about this is the teaspoon or that's the teaspoon? Yeah, that'll part? be, no, that's this one. That'll be in the video that they've seen. It was a heaping teaspoon so of you slurry. Know. Yeah. And it fermented just fine. That's it's cool. finished at 10, 11. I don't know if I told you the original gravity on actual brew day. I sort of don't get it until later when the foam dies down. But this was 1059 to 1011. Mm. This beer was like 1060 to 1010 with the same grain bill except for the two ounces of the Perla Negra. So no, very similar. I would definitely say I like this more than uh, what you're calling the I Sigmund think. IPA or Sigmund Uranus beer. Yeah. yeah. I totally To no fault, I don't think of anything. I think there's just so many variables that we don't all really know about. I've given this beer to a couple people and they actually, um, to the, the, the eyebrows, <gasps> no, no, contrary yeah. to the usual reaction, the eyebrows kind of <laughs> go up and they're like, wow, that's yeah. pretty good. It's almost like they're, not that they're surprised, but I give people so many of these homebrews and most of them are, they're all nice, but this one is a little bit different. Like this is one that you yeah. might actually go into a brewery and be like, I, I would like to have another glass of that. I was here last yeah. time. It's a unique tasting beer. Um, it tastes three times as better coming off that other beer, uh -huh. too. Like you're like, it kind of makes you think right. like, oh, thank goodness, like all isn't lost with this one exactly. element. Exactly. This one element, you know. Right, with that yeast strain, because I have two jars of the slurry, and I mean, so not like they'll keep dry. it forever. Yep. And these are both off the slurry? No. Oh, no, that's a, that's there's a Kvike. Imperial, okay. There's a Kvike blend from Imperial Yeast. That's this beer. That's another video. That's for another story. But yeah, this one is like yeah. a pretty darn nice beer, I think. I agree. And I like the Sabro Hops. Thank you to BSG Handcraft. Are those from yeah. Brew for Good or from? Uh, nope. Hand Delivered from our good friend. Mizza? Huh? The Mizza? Mike? Yeah. I don't know if it matters. I mean, I'm assuming he can give this junk out. But yeah, BSG Handcraft is uh, supplying some of these ingredients for these videos. Good so, people. That's what we call no pay payola. Good times. That's right. Get that Google money, yo. <laughs> All right. Catch you later.